We're here today to give you a brief insight into the emerging science of complexity. Specifically, we want to investigate the properties of complex systems and ask ourselves what they can teach us about the world and how we function within it. From one perspective, complexity provides a means of explaining apparent discrepancies in everyday phenomena. Here are a couple teaser examples. So, from a nutritional standpoint, complexity justifies the idea that there is considerably more health benefit to, say, eating an orange than there is to taking only its component vitamins. And in the subatomic world, complexity reconciles the fact that the mass of a hydrogen atom does not equal the, its only component parts, a proton and an electron. So, while complexity clearly has the potential to provide answers, we must now ask ourselves, exactly how does it provide these answers? First off, we want to give you a comprehensible framework for understanding several elements of complexity theory. Using this structure, we will then argue that some of the more important and pervasive phenomena in the world actually embody the characteristics of complex systems, and then suggest what this might mean to us all. The first thing to understand about a complex system is reflexivity. So, in our little community of houses, each house or agent has the ability to act upon or be acted upon by each and every other component of that system. The next tenet is self-organization. If in a system there is a well-defined structure or backbone, a natural cohesion will come to exist, even if the system's parts are discordant in their individual objectives. Finally, the characteristic that makes complex systems truly special is emergence. Amid the chaos of self-organizing, there's an adaptive process that spawns a radical transcendent property which makes the system's whole greater than its parts. So, Ultimately, we want to illuminate the idea that many perplexing phenomena that exist in the world that we simply attribute to nature's, let's say, wonder, are more likely, in our opinion, just the embodiment of emergent properties within complex systems that we do not immediately recognize. So our essential question was, how can we create a practical roadmap to help readjust all of our thinking about these sort of happenings? And specifically, we wanted to construct a model whereby simple instructional cues serve to mirror the personal behavior of agents within the natural world, and where uh, cohesion among such cues or cooperation among such cues really mimicked the emergence that we're talking about within complex systems. Our model focused on music. We hypothesized that the behavior of our musicians would be analogous to agents achieving complexity. We instructed four pianists to play four durations of four notes of their choosing. Our musicians then had the freedom to either maintain these four notes or to then change these four notes after these first four iterations, and after every subsequent four iterations as well. And ultimately, the goal was for the musicians to harmonize without any communication or other structure. Okay, so using this general toolkit, we would now like to walk everyone through three stages of how to better understand just one of nature's many seemingly inexplicable wonders. Specifically, birds flocking. Yeah, a little law and order sound. Okay, so what might the first stage of birds flocking in nature look like? And in the context of our musical model that we've just kind of articulated, what might it sound like? Frankly, it sounds like shit. <laughs> <laughs> While all the birds and musicians are individually evaluating their environment, they also have the autonomy to exert their own influence on the system. And this reflexivity does not immediately promote cohesion. In the second stage, we see the discordant objectives of individual birds, and the system seems downright chaotic. Similarly, our musicians are still sort of wrestling among each other, and our sound is still just a little bit off. In both examples, we witness the dynamics of self-organization manifest themselves through individual competing goals. Finally, we look for the birds to come together as the musicians adopt a collective sound.
So this is emergence, right? Just like the magnificent display of the group of birds moving together, the harmony here is more rich and more potent than any one musician could attain by playing alone. So while this example pertains specifically to birds flocking, the greater importance in it is that it provides us with a better methodology to go out into the world and try to answer large inquiries which have to date yielded very little through a purely deductive investigation. So Dan, just as you just did for uh, birds flocking, can you suggest another phenomenon that might be better viewed through this holistic framework we just proposed? Sure, so I didn't, I didn't prepare for this at all, but um, <laughs> imagine the following scenario. Um, everyone in our economy is told to transact in exactly whatever way maximizes their personal economic welfare. Well, this would be utter madness, right, James? Um, greed would run rampant. Well, not quite. Um, in fact, this is the very notion that the American capitalist economy embraces. And uh, what happens is that somewhere along the lines of these competing personal objectives um, emerges what Adam Smith once coined as the invisible hand. And it really is a unique organizational property of a wonderfully elegant and amazingly complex system. Here's another example. Historically, science has struggled to develop equations that govern the universe. To date, we use Einstein's relativity for macro phenomena, such as cosmology or gravity. And we use quantum physics or quantum mechanics for subatomic sub particles. Herein lies the greatest conundrum in science today. The two theories that make the laws of the universe explicable are inherently irreconcilable. But perhaps complexity can offer a solution. Maybe these two bodies of theory don't have to reconcile mathematically. Maybe the properties of the universe simply emerge in imprecise ways through, the, through their unique organization and interaction. So, so really, so what of all this, right? What's the big takeaway? Well, what it really is is that we ought to be prepared as people to embrace the ideas that allow complex systems to emerge, and more importantly, to thrive. In our education, we must be willing to readjust our scope. As future CEOs of Apple, like yours truly, uh, we must not be overly short-sighted in conducting our business affairs. And as future PTA presidents, we must be willing to allow the people we work with to pursue their own personal objectives and self-organize within an overarching group framework. To really maximize our success, we must ensure that we are not overly rigid or formal in the ways that we operate. Because if we do, we risk limiting the wonder and the awe of emergent properties within complex systems. Simply put, we ignore a long-term appreciation of complexity at our own peril. Thank you very Thank much. You.